Welcome, my friends, to this video. Um, today I would like to show you how you can build the following report here. And especially I would like to focus on the scope parameter, so how you can use it, and how you can combine uh, two parameters together and make them uh, adjust the corresponding widgets whenever you enter a value here. I strongly recommend that you have a look at my other video in which I explain how to build such a query field, how a query um, field can be used, and how the query field can interact with the widgets. Right, having said that, let's get started. So I have prepared here the report we have built in the last video. And um, let's add now the scope parameter. So we go to page parameters, add a parameter, and here is scope. We will name the parameter scope as well. And once we hit the apply button, it is visible here. Before we start playing around with um, adjusting here the queries, um, I recommend it's, it's good practice if you add a little script block here on top of the page for debugging, uh, because this allows you to visualize on the page what will be or what will be used in the query later on. So we will work a bit here before we have the final result, which we then apply to the different widgets. So what we want is a query which combines the two entries here, in our case with an AND. And for example, if somebody enters a project ID, the Polarian equivalent of the query would be project.id colon. And then we want to see page parameters the project ID. And now we use the scope parameter. And the scope parameter has basically two methods we want to uh, we want to use. Actually, we just want to use the scope method. So don't get confused. A scope is the name of our parameter. And it's also um, the method we operate. And um, the other method, the set method, uh, we don't want to set anything. So we don't we don't use this one. So when we use the scope method, we get back a scope object. And the scope object has three methods. First one is global. It is just basically a Boolean query, which allows us to find out, hey, Polarin is um, the current scope on a repository level. And if this is the case, then this will be true. The second one, the path method, um, is more interesting because it gives us the path to the current scope which means it's always something like slash, and if there is repository scope selected, it's just slash. Um, if there is a project group selected, it's slash uh, name of the project group. If a project is selected, then it's just the project ID. Um, which brings us to the next method, and that's project ID. And that's exactly what we want. We want the project ID. And let's see what happens. So that should be a good Polarian query. Uh, it looks at least good. And um, now let's have a look at why we didn't apply the queries yet to the table view. Because users may also do not so nice things. For example, they could just enter here nothing. If they enter nothing, in this case, our query would be wrong because Polarian is not able to interpret a query with, which starts with an AND. So we need to catch this problem. Then there might be also a case that the user selects repository level. So what happens there? You see, um, again, now we have the AND, which is okay, but then here is something not nice. And that's because we ask for the project ID, but on repository level, there is no project ID. So Polarin says, hey, I can't give you anything. And so we get an all back. And that's the second case we need to catch. So let's adjust our query we want to build. So we need to have a little check here. If, and now we say, if not, uh, if not, uh, no, that's page, oh gosh, page parameters. Um, dot scope dot give us the scope of the project 
And now we could ask the scope, are you global? But we will do it differently. We do it in the following way. We ask for the path. And if the path starts with a slash, then it's either repository scope or group scope. And if this is the case, um, then, yeah, if this is the case, then we will ask for the project. This is the first case we catch now. The second case is uh, what happens if the first value is empty. So if our query is empty, that's also something we need to catch. So if it's OK, um, uh, it is empty. So, as you remember, the exclamation mark at the beginning means not. So, if the query is not empty, so then we have some text entered here. In this case, we can say and. If this is not the case, then it is empty and then we don't add the end. Then we just say project ID, name of the project ID. And that's it. And then we have two if statements combined. And let's see if it works. We have almost finished configuration. So first case, what is it if it's, if it's empty? Right. Second case, if we choose repository scope, then it just takes the query. Uh, if this is empty as well, then it doesn't provide anything, which means the Polarian query is executed empty, bring, gives us back everything it finds in the, in the system. All right, so the query is good. We can apply it now to our, our widgets. So let's copy it. And here we just need to update the query. And there is one thing we have to take care of, and that's most of the widgets have a scope. And this scope is set on by default on the current project, but um, we have now allowed our user to define the scope, so we need to somehow make this on the global level because this will anyway be set by our entry here. So that's very important, otherwise whatever we enter here, the widget will execute it on the project scope and that can be really annoying if you don't find it. So let's do the next one. Also, this one has a scope, so we need to set the scope to default. And we will add here our query. And let's do it for the next one. Also, here we will set it to repository, paste it. And that should be it. Let's see. Let's go back. Now, let's switch the scope to repository. And now we will find all items which have the word drive pilot on a global level here. So that's all I wanted to show you. Hope this is interesting. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up. Bye.